Hi, welcome to Odyssey Academy. I'm Stacy Delzite, Manager of Transportation Technical Solutions here at Intersys. Before we get started with our training, I just want to give a little background on why we're showing Odyssey and Northstar branded batteries in the presentation today. Back in 2019, Intersys, who has been producing the Odyssey brand battery for nearly 25 years, purchased Northstar. The two batteries are very similar, both using a technology called thin plate pure lead. If you aren't familiar with thin plate pure lead technology, our Odyssey Academy trainings will help explain some of the unique features of this product. Our topic today is charging batteries, so let's go ahead and get started. After the training, we hope you will be able to recognize that proper training is critical for the best performance and lifetime from your battery. And you'll realize that different battery types require different charging algorithms. Also, we'll go into details on the proper algorithm for charging thin plate pure lead batteries. Finally, you'll have a chance to get any questions you might have answered. One of the most important things you can do to take good care of your battery is to charge it properly. In a nutshell, this means recharge it fully after each use using the correct charging algorithm. When batteries are discharged, they are sulfated and charging reverses that condition. We can see why the discharged battery is said to be sulfated by looking at the chemical equation for the reaction that goes on inside a battery. On the left side of the equation, we show a charged battery, which is made up of lead dioxide from the positive plate, lead from the negative plate, and sulfuric acid. When the battery discharges, the sulfate from the sulfuric acid attaches to the positive and negative plates. This means the positive and negative plates are now both lead sulfate and the electrolyte is water. We need to charge the battery fully in order to reverse this condition. Letting a battery stay in a discharge condition is one of the worst things you can do to it. Over time, that sulfate becomes stubborn and difficult to remove. With the sulfate attached to the plates, it can't be a part of the chemical reaction, so the battery capacity declines. Eventually, the performance declines so much that the battery must be replaced earlier than usual. I mentioned earlier that proper charging requires using the proper charging algorithm. The algorithm is the program that determines how the battery will be charged. We know that different battery types, flooded, AGM, thin plate, pure lead, need to be charged differently for the best performance. Because the electrochemical reaction is not 100% efficient, batteries require a certain amount of overcharge in order to get fully charged. The exact amount of overcharge varies by battery type and even by manufacturer. But in general, flooded batteries need a lot more overcharge than valve regulated batteries. It's not unusual for a manufacturer to specify that a flooded battery needs 110 to 115% overcharge, while our thin plate pure lead batteries only need about 104% overcharge. This difference means that using a charge algorithm designed for a flooded battery could severely overcharge a thin plate pure lead battery and will cause it to dry out and fail. The opposite is also true. Using an algorithm for a thin plate pure lead battery to charge a flooded battery would undercharge it. Undercharging means that all of the sulfate doesn't go back into solution. Undercharging results in what we call operating at a partial state of charge. It's never ideal to operate at a partial state of charge, but some battery types can tolerate it better than others. We'll talk more about internal resistance later. The low internal resistance of thin plate pure lead batteries allow them to perform better than other types 
when they can't be fully charged after each use. This is probably a good time to mention that since each battery type requires a different charge algorithm, it's never a good idea to mix battery types in the same application. That might seem obvious, but we get a lot of questions about it. Let's say you have a system with more than one AGM battery in it. One of the battery fails and you have a spare flooded battery that would fit. This is not a good idea because both battery types can't be properly charged using the same system. We've discussed in some of our other trainings how thin plate pure lead batteries are truly dual purpose by design. This means they perform well in both starting applications, such as automobiles, where high current is needed for a few seconds, and in deep cycle applications, such as electric trolling motors and recreational vehicles, where lower current is needed for a long period of time. How the battery is being used determines how it should be recharged. For example, if the battery is being used to start a vehicle, the vehicle's alternator will recharge the battery. It's important that the battery voltage from the alternator be between 14 and 14.7 14 volts for the battery to be charged properly. Now, if the battery is being used in a cycling application, it needs to be charged with a three-stage charger. These are sometimes called smart chargers or automatic chargers. They have a program or an algorithm built into them that takes the battery through three phases of charge. We're going to discuss our recommended charge algorithm in more detail on another slide, but many chargers on the market today have multiple charge algorithms built into them. We prefer an algorithm that is specifically for thin plate pure lead batteries, but an algorithm for absorbed glass mat batteries would be the second choice. In both cases, temperature compensation is recommended. When batteries charge, the charge voltage needs to increase as battery temperature decreases. The opposite is also true. Charge voltage should decrease as battery temperature increases. A charger that has temperature compensation can sense the battery temperature and make those voltage adjustments as needed. Switching gears just a little, the idea of using solar panels to help charge batteries is very popular these days. You see it a lot with recreational vehicles, boats, even houses. In order to charge with solar panels, you have to have a charge controller between the batteries and the solar panel. The charge controller makes sure that the batteries are being charged properly. The great thing about most charge controllers is that all the charging parameters can be programmed in specifically for the battery type that is being used. Now to go into a little more detail on the charging algorithm that we recommend for cycling applications. As I mentioned earlier, we prefer a three-stage charge algorithm. The first phase is called bulk and is a constant current phase. If the charger is a 20 amp charger, that means it will provide 20 amps during bulk charging. A factor that comes into play with charging batteries is how much current they can accept while charging. This factor is influenced by the internal resistance of the battery. Because thin plate pure lead batteries have very low internal resistance, they can accept higher current during bulk than other battery types. So the battery voltage starts out low during the bulk phase and the current causes battery voltage to increase. When the voltage reaches the preset absorb voltage, the battery enters the second phase of charge, which is called absorb. During the absorb phase, battery voltage remains constant and the current tapers off as the battery reaches a full state of charge. Finally, the battery transitions to the float phase. This phase maintains the battery at a full state of charge. In some applications, 
batteries will float continuously, but that's not required. On our graph here, we are showing some of the key charge parameters for thin plate pure lead batteries. We show voltage with the red line and current with the blue line. The current should be, during bulk, should be at least 40% of the battery's 10 hour rating. The absorbed voltage is 14.7 volts and should be maintained for eight hours. And the float voltage, if the batteries are gonna float, is 13.6 volts. So let's talk some about trickle chargers. Sometimes you'll hear these called maintainers and that's really a good name for them. They have low current output, usually just one or two amps, sometimes even less. They won't actually charge a thin plate pure lead battery that is discharged, but they can maintain a thin plate pure lead battery, which is fully charged. Because of the very low internal resistance of thin plate pure lead batteries, they can be charged with current up to 1C. This means the battery rated at 100 amp hours can be charged with 100 amps. The trickle charger can overcome the battery's natural self-discharge and also prevent discharge due to some sort of parasitic load, which is especially important if the battery is being stored for seasonal use. We haven't mentioned parasitic loads today, a lot of applications have some type of load on the battery, even when the application is turned off. Your lawnmower might have a computer that tracks hours used. Some cars have electric seats that keep positions saved in memory. Recreational vehicles have safety monitoring equipment. All of these are examples of parasitic load. They might only require milliamps from the battery, but they run 24 hours a day, every day. So over time, that adds up and will discharge the battery if it's not being maintained. The key parameter for a maintainer type charger is the float voltage. It should be somewhere between 13.5 and 13.8 volts for thin plate pure lead batteries. Speaking of the float voltage being between 13.5 and 13.8 volts, we've also mentioned that the absorbed voltage should be around 14.7 volts. I just wanted to point out that all of these are on charge, volt, charge voltages. If you want to take a voltage reading to know if your battery is fully charged, that needs to be an open circuit or at rest voltage. To get an accurate open circuit voltage, it's best to wait four hours after the battery comes off charge. This chart shows how open circuit voltage is related to a battery state of charge. Your thin plate pure lead battery should have an open circuit voltage of 12.9 volts when it's fully charged. As we reach the end of our training today, I just want to emphasize a few points we've made. For any battery to perform its best and have its best lifetime, proper charging is key. There are different charging algorithms for different battery types. Flooded, gel, absorbed glass mat, thin plate pure lead. These batteries are all charged differently. Using the wrong algorithm for the battery type can ruin the battery. Since thin plate pure lead batteries are dual purpose by design, they can be charged with an alternator when used in a starting application and with a three phase charger when used in a cycling application. Finally, trickle chargers are suitable for maintaining a thin plate pure lead battery, but don't try to charge a discharged battery with a trickle charger. We certainly want to thank you for attending our training on charging batteries today. We plan to have more of these training sessions in the future, so stay tuned for additional topics that we're going to cover. If you have any questions that weren't answered today, 
feel free to email me at stacy.delzite at intersys.com or you can call our technical support group at 1-800-964-2837. Thanks.